some old friends Feeling sketchy on a park bench Well, all the money that I can't spend Seven days from the weekend The music playing doesn't sound right Am I the only one that's not high? I'm going walking cause I can't drive Oh, I've forgotten what it feels like It's like I'm the first on earth to discover One foot in front of the other It's like I'm the first on earth to discover One foot in front of the other Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. In this episode, we're going to be doing a little bit different for you. It's going to be urban trout fishing, but wait for this, guys. Wild trout fishing. Not stocked, wild trout fishing. We'll meet a couple of the local river experts. Guys, tell us a little bit about it. Well, we're here on the river. It's uh, a public public piece of water. It's, we're here in a park. Uh, the river's low just at the moment, but it's clear. Uh, we've got a stiff easterly wind, which isn't going to help us. Um, but there are a lot of trout in the river. Just here behind us we've got a classic little sort of waterfall, like a spillway, but are there, there's other holding areas that these fish are going to be in? Yes, uh, obviously casting under under trees and looking for deep holes. You normally get a you know a trout waiting in a, in, a, in a deep sort of gully for a you know natural bait to swim by, so we're going to hopefully try and locate their areas and cast, cast over. Uh, working upstream, i found, is better for me but uh, others prefer casting downstream, but um, yeah, we're gonna see. Now this is clear water on this river here, so we've all got polarizing glasses. Are we actually gonna see anything? Do you think we'll be able to spot definitely, fish? Definitely, definitely sea trout, yeah. And sea trout as well. <laughs> sea trout as well. <laughs> <Salmon>. <laughs> and it has <laughs> happened, <laughs> and a, a cap helps as well, because yeah. people wear shades, but then you still get that light penetration, so a cap is a good idea as well, I think. Yeah. If you see a fish in there, do you actually, will you cast for it Oh yeah, we're definitely sight fishing, yeah, and also just casting, specific areas but we haven't got polarizing lens so you poor chaps aren't going to see any <laughs> let's get cracking and take a, a go at it and see if we can't catch one or two fish so as you can see the water is dead dead clear it's pretty low um, but there are some obvious fish holding patches that we know about so over under those trees there where we can't see the bottom quite as clearly that's because it's actually about twice as deep uh, twice as deep is probably only about 12 14 inches but that does make a difference coming around up towards the tail end of the weir pool we've got patches of weed which might hold fish but it's very shallow and typically although it looks very fishy we might not catch in this area however right at the tail we've got a little weed raft on the far bank it's a natural ambush point for the trout to come out there's a few boulders just in front of it which might hold a minnow or two and again always worth a cast into a spot like that what I'm using here, I've got a small spinner on here. This is a Wirex spinner, um, very light, um, tied to four pound fluorocarbon, which is very important in this clear water. Um, I've got quite a long, a long stretch of uh, fluorocarbon, probably the length of the rod, because even the braid can spook these fish. Okay, the real size, this is a Shimano Stratic 2500. Um, I've got um, six pound Sunline small game braid on there. Nice, nice and, nice and thin cast these lures brilliantly. So like Dave, I'm also fishing with a very light rod. This is a, a, a Sakura Sportism Neo, fishes up to seven grams. Although to be honest, it's a little bit of a stiffer blank and can probably handle a little bit more. It's a seven foot rod, which is actually slightly shorter than I normally use. Uh, but for this river, very small swims, we don't need a long rod and actually a long rod can get in the way. Unlike Dave, I've got a slightly even smaller reel. This is a, a Shimano Exarge 1000 uh, front drag reel tied to Daiwa J Braid 8 strand um, in the bright chartreuse colour which is easy to spot when you're casting. Uh, one thing I've actually learned from Dave is the importance of having such a long leader on this water because of it as he says spooking the fish is always an issue so like him I'm on a three or four pound fluorocarbon leader which is about probably four or five feet long uh, and then for a lure I'm going to be fishing just above the weir in some slightly slower water so I'm going to start off with a soft plastic on a jig head um, this is a little uh, deco gear setup, uh, Shirazu fine jig head. This one I suspect is about a 0.4 gram uh, weight, uh, size six, uh, size eight hook. Um, and I've got a, a, a SS grass minnow in a black and gold pattern. Okay, I'm just, I'm keeping the lure off the bottom because obviously I don't want to snag. Um, cut, sh trying to match the current really, just, uh, don't want it too high in the water, but don't, like I say, don't want to snag. So, I mean, it, this is a spinner. It's got a treble hook on it. 
the chances are if it does touch the bottom it is going to snag so we don't want that to happen low to the water pointing towards the lure i don't want it up here and why is that what's that do G give you more uh, striking me, ability or something yeah more control you know i can sometimes i give the lure a little a little flick just to try and gain their attention it's vitally important to make sure your hooks are sharp now i've just dropped a fish and i've noticed on one of my treble hooks where it, it must have snagged on the bottom it's it's burred the end over so i'm just gonna sharpen that up with my hook sharpener This is one of those diamond coated hook sharpeners. Um, this particular one's a Savage Gear one. And then I'll do the, the thumbnail test. Make sure that sticks in there. There we go. You see the mouths, the trout are very hard and bony. So you've got to make sure you can get that hook set. You got one, Dave? I've got one. Just took it after the That's trip. a lovely fish. Finally. <laughs> How's on the spinner? That was on the silver spinner. Silver and gold spinners work brilliantly here. Now I've been told you can tell a wild brown because of this white, white bit on the anal fin here. Now, I don't know how true that is, but yeah, possibly a wild brown. And off he swims. Caught on the same spinner. There's a lot of fish this size in this river, which is good news for us, because obviously they're, you know, this is the future fish stocks. Um, but this is why we're missing a lot of fish, because a lot of them are this size, so. Hanging around like a blank space. Mother handed me a suitcase. Said I've got to learn some new tricks. And now I've watched the whole of Netflix. And she won't let me do a retake. So guys, I've got no idea what this lure is called. Came out of Mike's tackle box, but look at the markings on that. Really pretty little fish. Was that a fast fishy? I've no idea. Can't remember. <laughs> it was the one that didn't get me snagged. It's like I'm the first on earth to discover one foot in front of the other. Another one bites the dust. Um, <laughs> yet again, caught on one of these Wirex spinners. Obviously, Meps do a similar version. Uh, when you when you buy a spinner just get the best you can afford already because cheap spinners the the blade will not spin and it's just frustrating so yeah if you're going to try this method then get yourself a decent kit they all count as we say they all count that is a perfect perfect wild brownie it's absolutely mullered that little tiny Meps. That's an OO Meps in uh, gold colour. Brand new, brand new with sharp, freshly sharpened hooks. And over the shallows, he has absolutely mullered that. And I'm pretty pleased because I've lost a few fish this morning. Had a pike on and off and a couple of others. So finally nice to get one on the bank and on camera. Okay, well it's time to release the monster. <laughs> Important to give it the cradle. <laughs> and in she goes. Don't need the net for this one, <laughs> but they're all welcome. I believe this one might even be smaller than the last one. <laughs> Record small one. It's uh, easily mistaken for a minnow, but it is a wild brown trout. And uh, absolutely perfect fish in perfect condition from lovely clean water. And we'll unhook him quickly and pop him straight back. Okay, so we've accidentally hooked into a grayling. And as you guys probably know, uh, grayling's out of season. So it's unhooked itself in the net. Beautiful, beautiful fish. So we've moved to another spot, same river, uh, slightly a uh, bit further downstream. So the water's a little bit deeper, the fish on average are a little bit bigger. And no word of a lie, this was literally first cast 
uh, and we've got another beautiful wild brown trout. Uh, probably a fish of, uh, oh, we're getting on for a pound, I'd have said. A little pike here, not the target species at all, but as you can see, he's gone straight for that jig head. So this was on a soft plastic. Well, that's what he took. Tiny little soft plastic. Wasn't intended for him, it was intended for a trout. And there we go, a lovely little jack, perfect condition. Ready to slip back into the water. And you can't wait to go, there he is. Okay, after trying a couple of soft plastics without any luck, um, I thought I'd put a spinner back on. Obviously different to what I was using earlier. I was using silver earlier. I've gone for this red with black stripes and uh, seems to have done the trick. So So here we have an absolutely gorgeous wild brown trout, well over a pound that one. And that was a switch of tactics uh, over to a soft plastic, I'll show you that in a moment. And uh, he's absolutely mullered that first cast in the swim. Off on the way, the best fish comes on the first cast. And he's got some serious teeth on him that one. Very predatory fish. And he's, uh, he's absolutely hit that and given me a good old scrap. There he goes. There he goes. So this is the lure the trout just took. It's a little silver and white curly tail grub. Rather, it looks a little bit like a spinner when it goes through the water because this tail flickers back and forth. But it's got an upward facing hook so you can cast it and let it sink to the bottom, which is what I did. I'd seen a fish rise, drop that straight on it, fish on and on the bank. Pretty pleased with that. So we've had a good session this morning. We've only had a two, two, three hours on the river in total. And despite the stiffening breeze and the very, very low water, we've actually had a decent number of fish we've between us. Day. We've had a great day. Yeah, you've uh, landed some really good ones. Uh, Graham had a great one. Mine were uh, small, but perfectly formed. Yeah, um, they all and that, count. Yeah, they <laughs> do all count. Now we're going to have a little look at some of the tackle that we typically take out for our short light lure sessions. Dave's got himself a little Japanese hip bag here. Similar sort of size to my, my bag, which is um, uh, one of these bags that goes around your back and swings around a sling bag. This is actually from a fly fishing manufacturer, and I find that fly gear is often a really good place to start for light lure tackle. Coming into this end of the, bo of the bag, we've got a series of, of tiddly little boxes that I carry a whole range of soft plastics. So all, all shapes and colors, like any good lure angler, I've got many more than I probably need. White's one of my favourites, though perhaps not on this venue. Um, here we tend to use much more natural colours. But as well as the soft plastics, we've also got a selection of little hard baits. So I'll show you some of these. Um, we've got tiny little crank baits, like this. Now we tend to fish these with barbless single hooks because we're fishing catch and release for small fish. And we want them all to go back safely. Um, so I've got a whole range of those. These are the Fox uh, Funk Bugs. Very good little hard plastic lure um, and easily re-rigged with the, with, the with the single hooks. Even got one or two surface chugging, uh, sort of more poppery type lures that can work um, in the summertime. As well as that, I've got traditional more minnow pattern type uh, hard, ba hard, hard baits. And then some funny little homemade ones so saw some videos on YouTube and had to go myself. These are made of bottle caps uh, from beer bottles. Went into a pub, got a handful of bottle caps. Um, they're folded over, they have a couple of holes put in. And I don't know if you can hear that, but inside we've got a couple of split shot to give it a weight and a rattle. And actually we've had pike and trout on those, absolutely no problem. Um, so those are, the, those are the commonest lures that we're using when we're talking about the sort of plastics and the hard baits. Um, but as well as that, we do have some of the more traditional trout spinners. These are very small because we're fishing mostly for small fish in very shallow water. Um, and uh, where's the one that did the business today? We little tiny MEP spinners, size zero. I'll show you one of those. Little tiny tr spinner like that. Quite often I re-rig these with, uh, with a single hook as well. Um, but I only got these yesterday and there wasn't time. Traditional trout spinner can't be beaten and on a, on a hard day like today that was the go-to lure. One other possibility which we didn't actually do today um, is a bit is something that we've taken from from this from the LRF scene. So these are LRF lures, soft plastic 
got wet lures, scented lures. These are Berkeley Gulp lures, which are have uh, got a, a rather smelly liquid all over them, um, and these can be used for a, for an equivalent of an upstream worming. So I've got some tiny Texas-style weedless hooks. They're only about an inch long, and fish those with a with a split shot rig, cast upstream, and you can pick up the odd fish that way uh, under difficult circumstances. Yeah. So hooks like hooks like this. So yeah, tiny little tiny little weedless hook there pop the worm on there and that can just be hopped downstream right on the bottom uh, if circumstances suit as I said today spinner was the spinner was what we needed wasn't it yeah and you found spinner. that out you found that out early with That's that great soft, trout. soft plastics will work but you lose a lot of fish due to the obviously the single hook which is further up the lure although we're early in the season um, and there's not a lot of insect life around uh, I do carry with me a few tiny little handmade surface lures um, that I can use as well um, and as well as the the surface lures I've also got a couple of little spoons you know the old-fashioned lures they were they were around for decades there's a reason for that they definitely work so small lures like these as you can see most of these have single hooks little spinner um, good when the water's a bit colored because there's a heck of a lot of flash off those and they cast like a dream and yeah definitely will catch a trout okay so this is actually marketed as a, a fly box but it's great for, for the light lure use you can put all your soft plastics in these little compartments here then i've got um i don't know if you're familiar these are chibrusca heads i think i've pronounced that correctly in fact there was one there earlier um and you can clip on any hook you you want to use on the day so that's an alternative to a jig head and then i've got a couple of flies there just in case moving on i've got more paddle tails similar boxes to mark with uh these straw i think the straw tail grubs in there a couple of little barkley barkley lures curly tails again the spinner um more lures more of the same these are these are creature baits normally i'd use these for uh for perch obviously forceps clipped onto my bag for easy easy access and easy unhooking i've got a line clip here see on like a, a lanyard a retainer my hook sharpener which you probably saw earlier so sharp if you haven't got sharp hooks you're not going to catch and it's all about percentages so by having sharp hooks you're increasing your percentage of hooking into a nice fish should it take your lure very important we have mentioned it before to use a fluorocarbon leader um, for trout in these shallow streams we're typically using leaders of about of about four pounds uh, and we're using four five foot long leaders because the fish are easily spooked um, fluorocarbon's great it's very very fine it's very clear it's hard for the fish to see um, although it can be a bit stiff for tying knots when you're at these low breaking strains it's really not a problem um, and it's an absolutely critical part of our setup okay obviously a very important part of uh, equipment for fishing is is a landing net and this one here by major craft um, is is a telescopic net it's not a massive net and it clips onto my bag via a magnet there we go quite a strong magnet and the beauty of this net is it's telescopic i don't know if you can get that on camera so a lot of these waters we fish <laughs> some of the banks are very sloped sometimes we're fishing off bridges and using a net like this obviously you can reach these inaccessible places Well, I hope you enjoyed that little uh, episode we've had. Uh, it's not a full day session, just a little short trip, but uh, quite a lot of river we've covered. And we've all managed to catch fish, haven't we, really? Well, almost. <laughs> <laughs> he bumped one of here. Someone had to make the film, guys. Someone yes. had to do it. <laughs> I took man. the sacrifice and I did, did do a man. bit of fishing, but I didn't catch anything. So, just goes to show on TA Fishing that we do blank. For all, this, all those out there that think we don't blank, we do blank. But these guys here have come up with the goods and hopefully you've got some pretty awesome tips there. Don't forget, if you enjoyed this, keep watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and don't forget the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show and... And our brand new digital fishing magazine, The Awesome Angler. Guys, we've been fishing with two awesome anglers. Thanks very much for Cheers, the fishing. Cheers, guys. Appreciate Cheers. it. Thank, thank you very much. Have a great day. Cheers, great thank time. you.